Hello everyone, this is Alex with the Sage and Public Library, and today we'll be going over a handful of tutorials and some of the tools that you could use in Affinity Photo. So to start, we're going to need to open up a document to work with. So we're going to take a look at some of the demo photos we have, and we're going to start with the base photo of the Nintendo Switch. What I want to do with the Switch is I want to insert another image on top of the Switch so it looks like we're playing that game on the Switch instead of Animal Crossing. So we're going to unlock our layer here. So if your layer is locked, it will have this lock symbol under your Layers tab. So make sure to unlock your layer. Once it's unlocked, you can start adjusting it. So what we want to do is we want to copy the image. If you're not comfortable with keyboard commands, you can right click and click Copy. I'm going to use keyboard commands, so Control c to copy, Control v to paste. Now that we have our image in here, what we can do is we can use the Move tool to drag our image around and adjust it. So the first step that we have here is we're going to need to resize our image down to around the size of the Switch screen. And then you can also use this Drag to Rotate tool here to adjust the angle of the image to make sure that it fits the same angle that the display is on in this image. So we're just going to keep adjusting the angle little by little until it appears to align perfectly. All right, so if you notice here, we have our angles correct, but there's no way that the screen will fit that size. So what I want to do is I want to use our mesh warp or perspective tools to apply adjustments to this image. So we're going to use the perspective tool and adjust the image to meet all four corners. So you can move them around, just make sure they're placed right where you want them. Once you're happy, you can hit apply. Now we have our image inserted right on top of our switch screen. Now what we can do is we can merge visible layers, and you can get rid of your old layers. And now the resulting image will be the Nintendo Switch with Fall Guys on it. So what we can do now is we can export this image. So we can click Export, and we can choose our export settings. So we're going to stick with PNG. We're going to use the whole document, and we're just going to click Export. It's going to ask us where we want to put the picture. You can select where you want it. So we can name it too, so we'll call it Switch Fall Guys, and then we'll hit Save. Now our image will be saved to where we selected it. So that concludes our first tutorial. What we're going to do now is we're going to start the next one. So we'll pick some other stock images that we can work with here. And we can select this wedding image, for example. So what we can do here is first things first, I want to crop this image down so it just focuses on our subjects. So we can use our crop tool here to remove a part of the image that we no longer want. So we can crop it. So if we type in here 668, now we have a square. So if we hit enter, now our image is square. So if we were using a square frame or using or required an image that was a one by one square. This will work. What I want to do now is I want to remove someone from this photo. So there are a handful of ways to do this. What we're going to be demonstrating today is called the in painting brush tool. So if you look at our tool tab here, close down to the bottom, you'll see a healing brush tool, which is layered with a handful of other tools. So we want to use the in painting brush tool. This will not work perfectly most of the time. You will have some areas where it will work great and sometimes where it makes a bit of a mess of things. So we'll go through and we'll fix those and make some additional changes as we go. So we can set our brush size that, to whatever size that we want. 20 seems about right. So if we drag our in painting brush over our image, you can see that it uses the background of the rest of the image to start making changes to our base image. Maybe our brush size needs to be a bit bigger, so we'll make those adjustments.
and we'll highlight the areas we want to modify. And what it will do is it will start to grab the background and use the rest of the image to make decisions as to what to put in place of the areas that we're highlighting. And then you can go over again with more inpainting brush and keep making changes until you're satisfied with the final result. You can see it doesn't always work exactly the way that you'd want. But we can go through and we can fix those later. So we're going to highlight the rest of him here. Okay, there we go. All right, so now he's been removed from our photo. And I did mess up the shadow a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to use our clone brush tool. So if you look in the bottom left, you'll see it will say Alt click to select a source. So we're going to click right over here. And we're just going to use this to recreate that shadow. We'll ask us here so we can go to blend mode and we can tell it I want it to blend average. So this should make it look a little bit more natural. So we can scroll in here and we can start making some finer adjustments. Right. Now that our image has been blended, you can see that we have mostly removed him from the image. What I want to do is go over here, this area here, where you can still kind of see his shadow with the inpainting brush again and see if I can make that area look a little cleaner. So we're going to highlight that area again. And you can see that it got rid of a lot of that darkness. And it began to replace it with the rest of the background there. So now if we zoom back out, we can see this area patch here is a little dark. So I'll highlight that, see if we can make it blend in with the rest of our image. And you can keep going through here and making some small adjustments to and make some changes. You can see here we have one spot that doesn't quite look like how it should. So we're going to use the inpainting brush to fix that a little bit. I want to fix the water here, but my brush is a little too big, so I made it a bit smaller. Now we can zoom back out. Okay, we have successfully removed that person from this image. And you can keep going if you wanted to remove this bit of land from the image here. What we can do is we can use this to highlight that bit of land. Pull that out of the image there. Okay, now that we have our finished image, same thing as before, what we can do is we can go to File, Export, or keep it as a PNG, and then we can rename this Wedding No Groom. All right, so now that we have that second image done, we have completed that tutorial. All right, I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today on this quick tutorial for Affinity Photo. Next time we'll be going over some other tools and some other techniques that you can use when learning Affinity Photo. Thank you very much. Have a great day.